In this video, we will discuss the transport of water and dissolved minerals in plants via xylem tissues. First, we will discuss how water and dissolved minerals are taken into the root hair from the soil. Root hair are extensions of the root epidermal tissues. Root hair will provide large surface area for absorption of water and dissolved mineral. Dissolved minerals such as nitrate, phosphate, and magnesium enters root hair by passive or active transport. If the concentration of mineral ions inside the soil is higher than the root hair, then mineral ions will be transported into the root hair by passive transport. However, if the concentration of mineral ions inside the root hair is higher than the soil, in this case, mineral ions will be transported into the root hair from the soil by active transport. Because of the accumulation of mineral ions inside the root hair, it now has higher solute potential compared to the soil and creates water potential gradient where the soil now has higher water potential compared to the root hair. As a result, water will enter from the soil into the root hair down water potential gradient by osmosis. Now that water and dissolved mineral has entered the root hair, now we will look into the process of how water and dissolved mineral are transported across the root cell. The three lateral pathways involved in transporting water and dissolved mineral across the root cells are symplas, apoplas, and transmembrane pathway. The root tissues involved in the lateral transport of water includes epidermis, cortex, endodermis, pericycle, and xylem. The endodermis, pericycle, and xylem make up for the steel of the root. The steel is surrounded by a very thick layer of cortex. In general, the lateral movement of water in the root will start from the epidermis then to the cortex and then enter the steel of the root. The first pathway is simplus. In this pathway, water and dissolved mineral will move through the cytoplasm and plasmodesmata from epidermis until it reaches the xylem inside the steel. Remember that simplus is the pathway of water movement. The mechanism of transport by which water moves is still by osmosis. The second pathway is apoplas. In this pathway, water and dissolved mineral will move along the cell wall as well as the intercellular spaces. However, the apoplastic pathway will not allow water and dissolved mineral to pass through the endodermis layer of the root tissue. This is due to the endodermis having a structure called Casparin strip inside its cell wall. Casparin strips are hydrophobic made from suberin, which functions to prevent water and dissolved mineral from entering the steel via apoplastic pathway. Because of this, upon reaching the endodermis, Water and dissolved mineral can only enter the steel by symplastic or transmembrane pathway. This is very important so that plant can control the uptake of mineral ions into the steel and prevents ions from leaking out of the steel. Here we can see movement of water and dissolved minerals from the apoplastic pathway will change to symplastic pathway before it can move into the steel of the plant root. The third pathway is the transmembrane pathway. This pathway involves movement of water and dissolved mineral across the plasma membrane of the cell. Which means that transmembrane pathway is actually part of the symplas and apoplastic pathway. Overall, we can see that no matter what is the pathway, Water and dissolved mineral will always move from the epidermis towards the xylem. Why? This is because of the water potential gradient between epidermis and the xylem. Epidermis has the highest value of water potential because of the uptake of water from the soil. Water will move from the epidermis into the cortex down water potential gradient. As increases the water potential inside the cortex compared to the endodermis. 
So water will move from the cortex into the endodermis down water potential gradient. Next, at this point, the endodermis will have higher water potential compared to the pericycle. As a result, once more, water will move from endodermis into pericycle down water potential gradient. Finally, pericycle now has higher water potential compared to the xylem, which will also cause water to diffuse from pericycle into the xylem by osmosis down water potential gradient. In conclusion, we can see that the overall movement of water from epidermis to the xylem is due to the difference in the water potential. The mechanism of movement is still by osmosis, but the pathway by which water moves can either via symplastic, apoplastic or transmembrane route. Next, we will discuss the mechanisms of water transport inside the xylem vessel. The first mechanism is by root pressure. It starts with mineral ions such as nitrates are actively pumped into the xylem tissue which reduces the water potential inside the xylem tissue due to accumulation of solute. Water will enter the xylem tissue by osmosis, hence build up high hydrostatic pressure that will push water up the xylem vessel. However, the magnitude of the root pressure is insufficient to pump water all the way up to the top part of the tree. This is where the other two mechanisms comes into play, which is to pull up water inside the xylem vessel. The next mechanism is transpiration pool. It starts with transpiration where water vapor are lost from the plant leaf via stoma. This reduces water potential inside the air space within the plant leaves. So, water will be removed from the xylem inside the plant leaf to replace water lost from the stoma during transpiration. Next, water will be drawn out from the xylem inside the stem to replace the water lost from transpiration. The action of water molecule being pulled out of the xylem inside the stem is called transpiration pull. The pulling action was initiated by the transpiration process. Next, the transpiration pull will initiate another mechanism of water transport which is cohesion tension hypothesis. In this mechanism, as water are drawn out of the xylem into the leaves, more and more water will be pulled up the xylem vessel. This continuous flow of water up the xylem vessel is called transpiration stream. Transpiration stream is possible due to the two properties of water which are cohesion and adhesion. Cohesion is the attraction between water molecules because of the hydrogen bonding, while adhesion is the attraction of water molecules with the cell wall, also due to hydrogen bonds. Both cohesion and adhesion of water will prevent the transpiration stream from breaking. So, water can continuously move up the xylem vessel. As water continuously being pulled up the xylem vessel, this will create a tension inside the xylem vessel. Even though there is a tension, the mechanical strength provided by the lignified secondary cell wall of the xylem vessel will prevent the vessel from collapsing. Hence, maintain the continuous stream of water up the xylem vessel. That's it for transport of water in xylem.